Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation, an exponential equation, maybe a polynomial equation with complex numbers. I guess we should call this polynomial because z is not in the exponent. It's at the base, right? And I'm at the guitar. Okay, just kidding. So I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with, let me see. You know what, we, we almost never start with the third method, so why not start with the third method today? Let's make a difference, right? Okay, it's all about making a difference. So my third method, and some folks are questioning like, when you do the third method first, does it become the first method? No, it's still the third method in my book. I mean, I seriously have a notebook that I write some of these solutions in, and it's the third one. If you don't believe that, I'll make a, uh, take a picture Please indicate in the comment section and I'll share the picture with you in the in a community post. Okay, great. Anyways, so the third method is all about polar forms and Euler because Euler is awesome. Do you know him? Check it out. Okay, so we have z to the fifth power equals z. First of all, I'm going to take a look at this equation and one of the things that I notice is what is the absolute value of z? Do I know it? No, but I can find it because I do have z on both sides. So if I absolute value both sides, can you absolute value? Like, is that a verb? Well, Americans like the verb noun, so I guess we can. Uh, let's absolute value both sides. And the absolute values have a really interesting property that you can f uh, put the five outside. So now we get the following equation. And then from here, we can basically put both of these on the same side, right? And then pull out uh, this as a factor, like a common factor. So we're factoring and we get this interesting equation. This is all about absolute value. We haven't gotten to solving Z yet, but I do want to get more information about the absolute value because it's going to be super helpful. Okay. Well, this one gives me absolute value of Z is equal to zero. The only, only complex number on earth and in other universes is Z equals zero, right? With absolute value of zero. Great. What about this one? This means the absolute value of z to the fourth is one, which means the absolute value of z is either one or negative one because four is even, right? But wait a minute, can absolute value of a number be negative? No, in the real world, no. In the complex world, no way. It can be zero or positive, but it can't be negative. So we're gonna discard that and go with this, okay? What does that mean for the absolute value to be one? It means you can draw a unit circle, all points on the unit circle, so on and so forth. In other words, in the Eulerian world, in the polar form, it means z can be written as e to the i theta, which is awesome. By the way, in general, you can write a complex number as z equals r times e to the i theta, where r is the absolute value and theta is the argument. But when r is equal to one, or it may or may not be one in general case, but when r is equal to one, this is what you get, okay? So you get a simpler form. And this is super helpful because I can plug it into the original equation. Now, if I knew that the absolute value of z does not equal one, is two or something else, could I still use the form like this? Yeah, with the r you can, but this is gonna be better, all right? So let's go ahead and plug it into our equation. What do we have? Zero to fifth equals z. So if you replace uh, z with e to the i theta, raise it to the fifth, set it equal to this, this is gonna give you e to the power five i theta equals e to the i theta. And from here, five i theta equals theta, theta cancels out, five five equals one, i equals one fifth. <laughs> I mean, just for fun, you can use it to prove that i is equal to one over five, but that's definitely false. Here's what you need to do. These angles are equal under certain conditions, right? we have to multiply the right hand side by a correcting factor, which is e to the power two pi and i. By the way, let me introduce you to one in the complex world. Meet one e to the power two pi and i. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the exponents e to the power five i theta equals e to the i theta plus two pi and i, and then natural log both sides to get rid of the e, we like Euler, we love Euler's number, we don't want to get rid of Euler, we want to get rid of the E in this equation, and that's going to give us 
5i theta equals i theta plus 2 pi ni, and then you can divide everything by i. That gives you 5 theta equals theta plus 2 pi n. That gives you 4 theta equals 2 pi n. Theta equals pi n over 2. Does that look familiar? n times pi over 2. Multiples of pi over 2, right? Yay. And from here, you can basically get the following. If n is equal to 0, theta becomes 0. And r is 1, so z becomes 1. If n is equal to 1, theta becomes pi over 2. Z equals i, and then you get z equals negative 1, and then you get z equals negative i. You basically go around the unit circle, hitting the corners. All right, what should we do next? The first method, yeah, going from third to first. We'll just jump to second, okay? The first method is something that you should probably never, ever do, but I'll still show you what it looks like, okay? After you see it, I'm sure you'll be convinced. Replacing z with a plus b i. Why are we not doing it? Do you really want to deal with the binomial theorem and come up with something like this? Okay, let me write the whole thing so you can decide for yourself. So we get, after raising the left-hand side to the fifth power, we get something like this in standard form. And in order for this to equal a plus b i, uh, it needs to happen, uh, we need to have this equals a and this equals b. From there, you get a system of quintic equations and looks like that's a homogeneous system and good luck solving it with b equals a k right or something like that anyways you can definitely give it a try it's going to be a lot of fun but i'm not going to go that right left as an exercise for you and don't hate me for that okay here's the second method and we will conclude with the second method and as always please let us know which method is your favorite if you can rank them that would be awesome like three, two, one, or one, two, three, or one, three, two. How many different permutations are there? Three factorial? Anyways, you can just come up with your own rankings and let us know. I'll be more than happy to hear what you think. Anyways, here's our second method. Let's finish this up. Okay, so I want to put everything on the same side to solve it as a polynomial equation. Remember, I told you this is a polynomial, so we should behave as such. So now we can factor this, of course, this is a difference of two squares, yay. And that gives us two easily solvable quadratics. Come on, what are you talking about? Z equals zero, Z squared equals negative one gives us Z equals plus minus I. This gives us Z equals plus minus I. In a, plus minus one, I'm sorry. In other words, the square roots of one, the square roots of negative one, and the square root of zero. Zero has one square root, that's the only exception. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.